Welcome to the studio. I'm here with Brian Mundell, founder of Adventera Games. Brian, how did you get started in making games? That goes back a long way. I started, learned to play chess at age five. Uh, and at age 10, I discovered Avalon Hill uh, simulation games. And in, at age 15, still in high school, I founded the Cornell Simulators Association and led that team to victory in the first World War Games tournament, which lasted two years because we had to lick stamps and send our orders back and forth across oceans. And that was fun. And so I started designing variants of diplomacy back in the, already in the mid to late 70s. Uh, I switched gears and just played games for fun for about 20 years, but in the mid, uh, mid 90s, after finishing my doctorate from Cornell, uh, I found myself at Bocconi University in Milan teaching soft skills to undergraduates, uh, but mostly MBAs, and the soft managerial skills like negotiations, um, OB, persuasion, um, group dynamics, these games, or these uh, skills are impossible to teach by traditional methods. So, you know, signing readings and lecturing and then having discussions. So I was inventing games and simulations. Uh, effectively, that, uh, that's the history of game design. Uh, had a lot of experience. I got known uh, throughout the academic world through my work uh, on the board of the Organizational Behavior Teaching Society as well. And, and all of your games are meant to help players learn about reducing their carbon footprints. Why is that an important focus for you? Well, uh, I grew up in upstate New York. First, I grew up in near Yellowstone Park in northwestern Wyoming, and then we moved to upstate New York, and I was part of the troop that camped the most days every year in all of New York State. So I was always into the outdoors. Uh, I was building log forts and log cabins already in my teens, and that was important to me. Uh, then uh, the environment played a nasty trick on me. In Lombardy, the air pollution is so bad that it ruined my immune system. My immune system was about 20%. Mm. So I had to leave Lombardy, uh, and I moved an hour north of Milan to Lugano, a clean city in Switzerland. And I decided that since I was leaving academia, I would dedicate my game and simulation design effort to games to try and get people to make painless adjustments to their behavior to effectively reduce their environmental footprint and clean up the planet. That was sort of my way of giving back. All right, so let's talk about this game that you brought into the studio today. How do you play this? <laughs> sure, it's very simple to play, but to understand why we chose the game mechanic we did, I'd like to talk for a couple minutes about the game itself. This game uh, is done in partnership with the Ocean Cleanup Foundation. And so we made cute little discs with pictures of these items and they're ordinary household items, you know, plastic cups, straws, yeah. uh, you know, uh, little toy soldiers, sandals, you know, just all kinds of plastic bottles, bags, the ordinary stuff that Americans typically, and also some Europeans, but less, live their lives with. So we load these, these objects, these, this garbage up on cute, four cute sea animals at the beginning of the game, and each player gets a rowboat, and the kids basically just row out and take the plastic off the animals and take it back to the rescue ship. So these are the robots? Those are the robots. All right, can just I be these, green? You, may, you let's, can be let's green. Let's play around. There you go, you can be green. <laughs> okay. What you do is you roll two dice. Okay, but these are special dice. They're special dice. dice. There's no numbers here, so right. what is so this? That number is the number of sea wave zones you can move your rowboat, and that is what happens to these guys. Okay, so this so looks like a little it's splash a, of some exactly. sort? Exactly, that is unfavorable wind. So you can choose any one of these sea animals and move it one zone further away from the boat. And I'm taking that off of you're the taking, animal out of the ocean exactly. and I'm gonna put you're it in putting here. it on the boat. You're cleaning oh. up the ocean of the plastic and freeing the animal from this plastic, which is burdening the poor thing down. So at the end of the day, the real goal, is the real goal for all of the trash to get out of this? Of course, of but this. there's a winner, and the winner mm -hmm. is the first person to get all six pieces of junk of plastic off of his animal, liberating his animal from, or her animal from the, uh, from the mess. So it's making ocean cleanup fun. Exactly, and the, the idea here is that uh, the next time the player goes to the grocery store with mom and the mom start, you know, picks up a packages of plastic straws, and mom, don't do that, it's strangling mm -hmm. my turtle. So how do we even stop these from getting in there in the first place? That's you exactly wanna get that in people's minds. So Boylan is working on cleaning up the mess we've already made and stopping the garbage that's already in the rivers from getting out to the oceans and picking it up and then putting it in 
in a safe place so that it doesn't break down and get in our bodies and cause all kinds of health problems. And get in animals' bodies. And getting in animals' bodies and through those into our bodies, for the fish especially. Uh, so that's, that's the job. But our job here is to get the kids to train their parents to buy less garbage at the grocery store and to get the parents to put pressure on their companies mm -hmm. to not put as much garbage into the air, as much plastic in. And at the end of the day, this game is helping kids just keep it at the forefront of their mind. Let's keep our planet clean. Absolutely. Thank That's you right. so much, Brian. This is such a fun game. Thank you.